Morning guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're over in Petra, Jordan, just about to head over to the famous Petra. And I'm seeing, hey, good morning. This is the, the famous Ramadan pancakes uh, for Ramadan, right? Yes, I'll call you. Uh, yes, and so, yes. yeah, people, they fold it like this. Uh, yes, right? yes, 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 very good, come on, come on. Yes, these are, they taste really, really good. So, we got the batter, sitting up. A pancake conveyor belt. I love pancake conveyor belts. And um, <laughs> second, a whole bunch of them. These taste really good. Very, very, welcome. very good. Very, very good. Too much. Welcome, baby. You could just, you could eat these non-stop. Okay, let's go inside to the market. We'll see if we can find some more. Thank you. Chukran, welcome. Chukran. Welcome. And I can't help but notice this guy over here just packaging, and the bread falling from the heavens. <laughs> <laughs> the conveyor belt bakery. <laughs> I love this place. Oh, we'll get, also get these ones. This is pistachio. Alright, guys, so we arrived now over at Petra. Petra's a little bit over there, but before we go in, pick up a headscarf real quick. Get to you, Yeah. Give me. I, I got you. it, I got it, I can do it. I help yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Something kind of like this. Okay, we're all set. Go ahead and... I love Petra. So we got a, got a locust. Where are you from? This is still alive, right? Yeah. Steve, you're going to eat him? No, I'm not going to huh? eat him. You can eat him. Bihar. You're from Bihar? Bihar, yeah, Bihar. Hmm. Yeah, cover his eyes. Bihar. Keep him from jumping. Where? Where? Can you eat him? No. Okay, let him go. Let him go. Goodbye. As we're entering here, there's a lot of locusts. Just to be prepared if you guys come here. They're trying to chase us down with horses. They're actually bringing the horses behind us. I don't know if you noticed that. They're following us. Um, but uh, supposedly, the horses you said are included in the Jordan Pass. <coughs> it says it is. Question mark. But then you know, like the tip. What, yeah. what is the tip? And usually, whenever they ask that, they're going to be asking like you know, twenty JD or something, which is like thirty bucks. Yeah. So the question is, is it worth it? I don't know. They're going to keep following us. Shubham gave in just a little bit to them, and yeah, they're following us. Yeah, he showed. He showed. Oh, he showed God. any interest. If you show any interest, you're any done. interest, any interest. <laughs> and now, now they're going to follow us. And they're going to tell they're their friends, and they're going to follow us with the donkeys all day, because they're going to tell their friends to follow the Indian guy. The way it goes. Hi. Nope, sorry, I don't have any food for you. So this is one of the most famous places here in Petra. Right as soon as you enter, um, you saw we were walking in 1.2 kilometers. Oh, the camel is groaning. So this is one of the most famous sites here because it's one of the most well-preserved places here in Petra. This is the, the treasury. Um, but all of these places are facades. Facades being that it's, it's just the cover. There's really not much behind. But this place, this one's 40 meters high, so about 120 feet. And all the way at the top, I don't know if you can see it, uh, if I move back, you'll be able to see it. There's a little urn up there um, that supposedly they say that's where they kept the, the pharaoh's uh, treasures. I think it's just a local legend though. Okay, we're going to keep walking down, down into the facades. <laughs> this new group of tourists just came in, so it's thankfully not too much. Um, but in normal times, if you come here, you'll probably see about 20 times more tourists. Um, and something that was really interesting to me is that uh, as Steve was running away. <laughs> I was talking with Steve about this, that Steve came here 20 years ago. 20 years ago, and he said that even back then, there's still a lot of tourists here. So the question is, if you want to have a, a real experience, how do you avoid the tourist troops, the 
the, the massive groups of them. And my answer is always going during Ramadan. I did the same thing going to the, the pyramids of Giza uh, in Cairo about two years ago. And specifically during Ramadan, because I also went during a normal time, and the difference was about 20 or 30 fold uh, of tourists. Okay, so now we're coming up on the, the facades of the, the burial places. Um, all of these ones, distinctly not residential, we're over here. Even a lot of these, though, I mean, like I said, fundamentally they're all mostly facades. Yeah, like I said, like I said, really not too much inside of any of these. Because they're just... Oh, it smells like someone went to the bathroom in here. Probably some Bedouins. But yeah, really not too much inside. This one reminds me a lot of the Roman places I've been to in North Africa. Because it's got, of course, these nice columns. But, um... Uh, this is the, the theater of the city that could last, it could, it could hold 4,000 people. It's the only theater that's uh, carved into rock in the world. So apparently my headscarf is a little bit off. So she's helping me fix it. What's your name? Hala. Hala. And you're from Petra? Yes. She almost looks like she's from India, but India. no, not quite. India. There goes our girl Hala. Yalla hala! <laughs> okay, so now we're going down the main colonnade street. This was like the city center, kind of, um, of this ancient city of Petra. Um, Petra, I should give a really quick historical account of it, um, that it was built about 2100 years ago. This place was thriving back then, and up until uh, 363, there was a massive earthquake that ruined it. And uh, about uh, then it was taken over by the Romans. The Romans fixed it up, and then they kept it for about another 400 years, 300 to 400 years before they, it was mostly entirely abandoned. abandoned. But um, the reason I mention that is that this Roman influence, um, because this is a great example of this. So like I said, this used to be the main colonnade street, the main market area, and uh, it goes all the way down to the monastery at the end. And it used to be, uh, when it was originally built, uh, you know, it followed the curves of the land, and when the Romans came through, they neatened it up. So they rebuilt this main... The, the Romans have... A, they really liked to keep things nice and straight like this, a nice colonnade, and then columns on both sides. Um, so straight to note, and um, you, you can imagine... You can imagine what this place used to look like back in its heyday. So it used to be, you know, taverns, markets, um, even hotels on the sides. Bustling markets here. You can imagine the donkey going by, the children running by. Maybe you can imagine some of the filth, um, but you know it's it, it it makes it makes it feel so much more alive. Also, one thing that I think is really interesting about places like this is there's some really small indicators, small uh, small hints that are hidden throughout the place. So in Tunisia, for example, um, in these Roman cities uh, over the Roman Empire, they they loved to build up into these these bustling cities. One of the things that was legal during uh, during these Roman periods was prostitution of all things. And so in Tunisia, there's some really cool things on the sites that as you're walking along like this, there's indicators that are carved into the stone that are like the, the signs, because obviously there's no metal signs back then, or it's all just word of mouth. So instead, and if you have people from all over the world, you need symbols or things that are really easy to get the image right across. And so in Tunisia, for these prostitution brothels on the sides, they'll be carved in where it has uh, literally like a penis or a phallus, and that directs the way towards the prostitution joint. Um, so I, I, it's funny to look for those kinds of things because they do exist. Brady, you can't use these videos. Why? It's so windy. I, 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 I... Some ruined columns that toppled. It's just, it's such a beautiful place. Such a beautiful place. Water is, of course, a fundamental, important thing to human. Uh, in, to humans, fundamentally important thing to humans. Ugh, come on, talk, Brayden. Um, but it's interesting how different cultures have evolved and different solutions to get that necessity. Um, of course, we have modern day examples, even of Egypt, um, where they're trying to build dams to protect that water supply for their 25 million residents in Cairo. Um, but 
if you go to the sites in northern Africa, they have uh, the the Romans had a they really enjoyed to use um, terracotta pipes. Some people used lead pipes. Um, here in Petra, I'll show you as we're walking out. You may have seen already some of it, but carved in the walls of the rock, there's like these channels that are dug into the side, and those control the water supply. Water, of course, is very important out here in the desert, um, but it's really fascinating to think to see that the the idea that yeah, water is so important but how people came up with different solutions to get that necessity. Hey. You, I'm talking to you. Let's see if this helps. Hey, hey you. Right. Sweet, sweeten the deal. Sweet the bread. Deal. Oh, 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 now you're interested. Now you're interested. Okay, okay. Now, now I'm a friend. Now, now I'm friendly. Now you got a new best friend. And everyone's oh, coming over. You. Oh, hi. Oh, come on. Hey okay. guys. Gotta save some for the kids. Gotta save some for you us. I, I gave you some right there. Right there. Right there. Just for you. Hi. Oh, okay. So sweet. Yeah. You want some of this? Ah, it's too small for us. No. Oh. Some, some for the baby. Always gotta give some to the baby. Nope. Nope. It's for the baby. The baby knows where to go. For the baby. Not for you. Baby. Hey, you. You want some more? Hey you, hey you, over here. Oh. Over here. Over here. Go yeah. back. Oh, you're going for the uh, stash. Uh, go back. Smart. Okay. Baby, baby, baby. Hey, no, no, don't, don't run away. You're staying here with me. Food for the baby. No, not for, not for mom. Just for the baby. Okay, fine, mom. Yalla, 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 yalla. We just walked up on it, didn't even notice it until we were right next to it. But here's the monastery. Look at her face though, she's she's just she's just red. It's like a typical wild west kind of scene. Oh, look at him, he's so happy. Now I know.